Good morning. Uh, so today for yin, it would be a good idea to have a bolster and a strap, ideally a strap you can loop, but if you can't, that's fine. I'll give you an, op uh, an option, an alternative. So if you have a strap that loops, let's go ahead and loop it now, take the strap. And if you've got one like mine, it has two rings. You put it through both rings and then you go back through one ring. So then you have a tail and you can pull it and make the loop as big or as small as you want. Let's start with the big loop. Um, I have a six foot strap, so I can go as big as this thing will go. If you have like a 10 foot strap, that might be too big of a loop, but you can just get it to a place where you can adjust it. So have the strap nearby, just set it off to the side of the mat. Come on down onto your back and let's loop the sole of the right foot into the strap. So if you don't have a strap that loops, that's fine. You'll just put the foot in there grab both ends of the strap, left foot can stay on the mat and you're lining up the heel with the hip. So you're not trying to bring the leg in as close as you can, line up the heel with the hip. And the foot's flexed. So you're pressing into the strap with the ball of the, the foot, uh, big toe mounds or the toe mounds of the foot. And then make sure you know where the buckle is. If you do have a strap that loops, you want to bring it so it's between the foot and the head. So it's not going to touch either. And then if you can make a triangle with the strap. So widen the base of the strap, bring the head into the strap and you're placing the head so that uh, it's the base of the skull that rests in the strap. And here's where you might find that you need the strap to be uh, longer or shorter. So you would adjust the length of the strap to allow that to happen. And you wanna feel like the foot's pushing away from you and the head's coming down toward the mat at the same time. So you're getting into the backside of this uh, right leg. You're allowing the neck and upper body to release and open. And left foot can stay on the mat, especially if you feel like there's enough to do here. If you want a little bit more, you could extend that left leg forward. And for me, that puts a little bit more weight into the right foot. So it feels good. It feels like there's a deeper opening happening in the right leg. But if it's too much, just bring the sole of the left foot uh, back to the mat. And then arms are down by the sides. If you have the loop, you don't need to use the hands. And you can even turn the palms to face up so the chest stays open. And ears, the tops of my ears are inside the strap. I'm going to make sure your ears aren't bothered. And start to slow down the breath. Relax the face. And start to let go from the tip of the tongue down through the base of the throat. Keep that balance between the foot working away from you and the head going down toward the mat. So there's still tension in the strap. And if you're not using a loop strap, you're hanging on to the strap with the hands, try to loosen the grip with the hands. As light as you can go without losing tension in the strap.
and you'll start to switch sides. So grab both ends of the strap, wherever you are, bring the left foot into the strap, release the right foot carefully, especially if you have the head in the strap, set the right foot down onto the mat, get the strap set up. So it might be in the right place. You might need to lengthen it or shorten it. Maybe adjust the strap around the head, arms down by the sides. If you have the head secured, left foot is gently pulling away from the strap and the head is coming back down toward the mat at the same time. So you can kind of play with it a little bit, feel where even is in your body. Start to settle in on this side, right foot can stay on the mat or right leg can go out in front of you. If your head is in the strap, grab both ends of the strap, widen the strap so you can take the head out, set it back down onto the mat. And we all have both hands on the strap with the foot on the strap. Take the strap off the foot, bring the knees in toward the chest. So we just did an opening on the back sides of the legs to get things going there. We'll move on, set the feet down to the mat, roll over to your right side, bring yourself up to seated and grab your bolster so and you can always use folded towels too and make them into the shape of a bolster or blankets so you want it the long way um, out in front of you you'll come forward to hands and knees and then take a look let me show you what we're doing we haven't really done this in yin yet so notice how far up the mat and the bolster my hands are you don't want them to be way back here otherwise your head won't land in the same place so you want the hands pretty uh, close to the top of the bolster tuck the toes come into downward facing dog the head will shift way back but you rest the head on the bolster Hips go up and back, backs the legs are long. So heels are reaching down toward the mat. And then to come out, you'll just bring the knees down and your back to hands and knees. So we'll go through it together, hands down on the mat, up by the top of the bolster, tuck the toes, lift the hips, bring the forehead down to the mat. Shoulders are working back toward the hips. You can have a bend in the knees, but if you can do it without the bend in the knees, go for straight legs. 
And there's just a different sensation in your downward facing dog. When you can rest the head down, you can start to release the neck. Maybe you can feel some more space in the trapezius because you're drawing the shoulder blades toward the hips, hug the lowest front ribs in belly in, and then lift the hips up high as you bring the heels down. So not only is this a great pose for opening up the entire body, it's also a good one for relieving congestion. It's that time of year when there's a lot of us are getting sick or feeling some kind of congestion. So I thought we'd focus on that a little bit today. And if at any point you need a break, bring the knees down. You can take child's pose, come back in when you feel ready or stay in child's pose. That's fine too. Let's do three more breaths here. Inhaling in through the nose. Slowly back out. Deep breath in. Exhale, back out. Last one, inhale in through the nose. Back out through the nose. Bring the knees down to the mat. And you'll take child's pose. You can use the bolster, bring the hips back toward the heels. You might need to move the bolster forward so that you can just rest the forehead on the bolster and the arms out in front of you. I'll also give you one other option. You could turn the bolster the wide way out in front of you. This is a, a deeper shoulder opening. So if your shoulders are sensitive, this may or may not be a good idea. Hands come to the bolster, elbows are lifted away from the mat, forehead comes down to the mat. So if your shoulders like that, you can stick with that one. If you'd rather have the bolster the other way, that's fine too. Hips are going back toward the heels. And this is also a good pose for congestion. When you have the forehead resting on something, it starts to calm the body. And we want to relieve as much stress as we can when we're working through congestion.
And start to lift the head up. If you have any props underneath you, set those off to the side if you're using a bolster. Come to seated on the mat. Have a block nearby. Just bring it next to the hips. You'll come down onto your back, soles of the feet to the mat. Walk the feet in. We're coming into supported bridge. So you'll take the block either on the lowest height or the medium height, press into the feet, lift the hips up, slide the block underneath the hips. So not the lower back, back of the hips are supported. Soles of the feet stay on the mat for now. Uh, grab the outer edges of the mat. If you're using one, like you're going to rip it apart and lift the chest up. You'll feel the shoulders come underneath you a little bit and you'll keep that lift in the chest. Arms can let, or hands can let go of the mat. You can turn the palms to face up. And we'll just stay here to start our restorative bridge pose. Another good one for congestion. And one other thing about the placement of the block. So if you have the block on the lowest height, it's the wide way. Same thing with the medium height. It's the wide way underneath you. So you'll maintain the lift of the chest, reach one leg up, make sure you feel even on the hips. Once you get yourself even, lift the other leg up. So legs are relaxed, chest is still lifted, coming into Viparita Karani. And start to bring the feet back down to the mat. You can do one at a time or slowly bring both down. Come back to your restorative bridge, supported bridge. Chest is still lifted. And then extend the right leg forward. So keep the heel down on the mat. See how that feels on the front side of the hip, lower back. You want to feel like the tail is going forward toward the heels. If that feels okay, you can bring the other leg out in front of you. One leg at a time is fine too. 
If it feels like it's too much, you can just do a few breaths on one leg, bring it back in, switch legs and go side to side. Maybe three to five breaths on each leg if you're doing one at a time. If you're staying with both, great. Make sure the chest stays lifted. Sometimes it wants to start to go uh, down toward the mat and you want it lifting away from the mat. And start to walk the feet in, coming back to your supported bridge. Press into the feet, lift the hips up, slide the block out from underneath you and set the hips down onto the mat. And roll over to your right side. Use the hands to bring yourself up to seated. So once you come to seated, uh, we'll just use the bolster for this next one. You'll bring the bolster the long way in front of you again. Bring the knees over to one side. So if you're facing the bolster, the knees are going to the left and you're on the right hip. So hands down on each side of the bolster on the mat, start to walk the chest forward. And once you get down low enough, you can choose, try looking to the right, see if you can easily rest the head down onto the bolster. If you can't, then lift the head, turn it to the uh, left and rest the right side of the head on the bolster. So figuring out which twist is most suitable. Twists are great for shoulder opening. So if you have anything going on in the shoulders, twist can be really nice for that. But if you do have something going on for the in the shoulders and it's too much, to twist, then back off. Don't feel like you have to go all the way into it. And start to lift the head up, 
bring the hands down so that you can lift the chest up and away from the mat. Right hand comes over to the left. Turn around so you're seated away from the bolster. Keep bringing the knees all the way over to the other side. And hand on each side of the bolster. Knees are bent. You could always put some padding between the knees, blanket, pillow. Start to walk forward, lengthening the torso. When you get down low enough, see what it feels like to turn the head to the left. Rest the right side of the head onto the mat. If it doesn't feel good, switch the direction and go the other way. And let's bring the hands in toward the bolster underneath the shoulders, lift the head up, lift the chest up, set the bolster off to the side. You won't need it. Um, you will need a block though. So take a block. We're going to sit on it on the lowest height. I'll turn to face you. Actually, you should probably turn to face the side of the mat, bring the bolster toward the back edge of the mat and sit up onto the bolster. We'll stay this way for a little while facing the side of the mat. You'll just come to a cross-legged seat. So your hips are propped up on the bolster and you're trying to cross at mid shin, which should be easier with the hips elevated. Feet are more underneath the knees, not the hips. So bring them forward, toes pointing forward. So Sukhasana, but the hips are elevated. Uh, bring the arms down by the side, sit up tall. So it's like, it's a little harder to touch the mat because you've got the hips up. So maybe it's just the fingertips chest is open and then let the head come down without lowering the chest. So chest is still open and broad, but the head's coming down. You're trying to let the head hang so we can get into the backside of the neck. Bring the right ear over toward the right shoulder. It won't touch. Both shoulders are still working away from or working down toward the mat.
take the right hand, lightly rest it on top of the head. Bring the left arm behind the back, so like a half bind. Breathing in and out through the nose if you can, moving the breath up and down the back of the throat. If you're congested, you breathe however you can get the most efficient airflow, which may be through the mouth. Left arm comes back down the side. Right hand comes back down toward the mat. Bring the chin back down toward the chest so the head's even and not off to one side. And maybe you feel a difference in one side of the neck compared to the other. Switch the crossing of the legs. Bring the other shin in front. Bring the left ear over toward the left shoulder. Keep reaching away with the arms and the shoulders away from the ears. Take the left hand, bring it on top of the head as light as you can. Right arm behind the back. So not only making space in that shoulder, but the neck, where the neck connects to the shoulder, that whole quadrant of the back. And start to bring the left arm, oh, sorry, right arm down by the side. Left arm comes back down to the mat. Chin back down toward the chest so the head is centered, chest is still lifted. And observing the back side of the neck, the sides of the neck, hopefully feeling a little bit more freedom there. Start to bring the head up. Keep the eyes closed. Just sit up tall, keeping the shoulders away from the ears. Noticing any differences. And you'll blink open the eyes. Bring the soles of the feet to the mat wide. So you're turning the toes out. Knees and toes are in the same direction. So you can open up your feet wider than the toes. They might need to come in a little bit so that you keep them in line with the knees. Bring the hands down in front of you. Knees are still opening up. So are the inner thighs. You can walk the hands down. Let the head and the neck go. Coming into a modified legged straddle to start. This is a nice one to do with the hips elevated. It's more difficult with the hips down on uh, the mat. Not that it can't be done, but you just might feel um, a little bit more comfortable with the hips elevated. So know that this is always a good alternative. But now that the neck is released, let that go. Let the head hang. The neck doesn't need to work to hold the head here.
And start to bring yourself back up to seated. So you can stay up on the block. We're going to widen the leg. So come into a wide-legged straddle. See how it feels with the block underneath you. If you feel like you want the hips lower, then bring the soles of the feet to the mat. Set the block off to the side. Come to your wide-legged straddle. And the reason why we're sitting this way is so that the heels stay on the mat. So you might need to back up to keep your heels on the mat. Unless you've got carpet underneath you, it probably doesn't matter. So turn to face the right leg. Make sure the left knee and the left toes stay up. You're turning to face the right leg, right toes. Start to fold forward over the right leg. So you can use blocks underneath the hands or the forearms, however you want, or skip the blocks and just bring the hands down to the mat. Let the head and the neck go. Make sure both legs are long and that you have both hips down on the ground. And start in the easy place. This isn't... Um, necessarily uh, a, a comfortable position for all of us. We've done quite a bit of opening to get here. So take your time with it. Maybe the neck can soften so the head can hang down a little bit lower. And start to walk the hands back in, coming back up to seated, facing forward, sitting up tall, feeling the difference in the right side compared to the left side. Start to turn the chest to face the left leg and fold forward over the left leg. Take your time. Come part of the way in. You know you'll go deeper as you stay in it and breathe. Keep the, no the knees and the toes pointing up as best you can. Let the hands rest on something. And let the neck relax so the head can hang.
And start to come back up to seated, sitting up tall, chest lifted. Bring the hands back behind you. Bring the soles of the feet to the mat. Move the knees side to side. We'll do this counter pose before we take one last version of Upavishta Konasana, wide-legged straddle. Just to get some movement since we were there for a while, you're coming right back into the same shape. So wide-legged straddle, make sure you're more toward the front of the hips than the back of the hips. Reach the arms up overhead on an inhale. On the exhale, start to fold forward. Knees and toes stay up. Hands come down. You might want blocks underneath the hands. If this bothers your lower back at all, bring blocks underneath the hands and keep the chest lifted. And this is a nice way to do your wide-legged forward fold. Could be nice for congestion too. If folding forward is starting to bother, you can keep the head up, close the eyes, and you're still getting a, a, a good opening in the lower half of the body. So modifying for how you feel, knowing what your options are so you can make those decisions accordingly. And start to walk the hands back in, coming back up to seated. Bring the hands to the backs of the thighs so you can bring the soles of the feet to the mat. Hands back behind you. Come back into those windshield wipers. Going side to side with the knees. And the next pose, you'll want two blocks. I'm going to grab a different color block so you can see them better. So these brighter blocks, I think, will be easier to demonstrate. So you'll take your two blocks. Uh, make sure you have a bolster nearby. You won't need it for this pose, but the next one, and you may not want to get back up. So first block goes on the medium height. Second block goes behind that one on the tallest height. You could always lower them both down one level if that's too much. So turn around so that you're facing away from the blocks. Hips and feet are down on the mat. Start with landing the shoulder, the bottom tips of the shoulder blades on the uh, closest edge of this 
uh, first block. So come down onto the forearms, land the bottom tips of the shoulder blades on this first block. You might need to shift around a little bit to do that. So the idea is that the center of the chest, when you lie down on this first block lifts and spreads, then gr use the hands, grab the second block, place it underneath the head. And you want to make sure this block is flat on the mat. A lot of times when I'm teaching in person, I'll see people do this and the block is tilted. So lift the head, move the block around. It can go forward. It can go back. You want that part of the skull that sticks out to be supported. And then from here, soles of the feet are on the mat and you can just focus on the upper body and the back bend. If you need to come out and adjust anything, do that. You can also put a bolster on top of the blocks and that'll soften things up if it feels like it's too firm with the blocks underneath you. But if this is fine, stay here and then bring the soles of the feet together and the knees wide. So you're changing the shape of the legs to butterfly. Supta Baddha Konasana is the whole shape but you may need to move the feet away from you a little bit so that there isn't uh, too deep of a hip opening or too much pulling on the inner thigh area. So find a comfortable place with the feet. The closer in the feet are to the body, the more intense this is. So move them away. Lower back should be long. So the tail is going toward the feet rather than the blocks or the mat. I'll start to wiggle the fingers and the toes just so you can figure out where they are. Bring the hands to the outer thighs to help the knees back together. And it, release the arms, extend the legs out in front of you. So legs are straight, still be a more intense back bend. If it's too much, soles of the feet can stay on the mat. You feel that release on the hips with the legs straight out in front of you rather than having them out to the sides like you did before. And now we'll all bring the soles of the feet to the mat, bring the forearms and the hands to the mat. Once they're there, lift the head looking forward, walk yourself up onto your hands, lifting up and away from the blocks. Set, reach back, set the blocks off to the side, come back down onto the mat. So you're lying flat soles of the feet can stay on the mat for now. Extend the legs out in front of you lying fat flat so that you can feel the spine settle.
And then bring the sole of the left foot to the mat, flip over onto your stomach. So you're lying on your stomach. You'll bring the forearms underneath you like Sphinx pose. Bring the left knee out to the left, toes turn out to the left, and then widen the arms, keep the elbows in line with the shoulders, cactusing the arms so you can look, and then turn the head to the right, see if you can rest the left side of the head down onto the mat. So we'll just do a quick counter on each side with this, not long, just about a minute, a gentle twist to come out of that back bend, and then we'll head into Shavasana. Bring the head back up, send that left leg back behind you so you're even, and then bring the right knee out to the side, toes turn out, inner edge of the foot is down, look to the left, rest the right side of the head down onto the mat. Same thing, other direction. Start to lift the head back up, send that right leg back behind you, flip over onto your back again, grab your bolster. You can bring it underneath the head like a pillow. So you're lying on your back bolster, supporting the curve of the neck and the head. And let's take the blocks. If you have them, if you don't, you can just extend the legs out. If you have the blocks, bring them on the lowest height, the wide way underneath the thighs. So you might need to lift the hips to send the tailbone forward, arms come down by the sides, toes turn out, close the eyes. Shavasana, final relaxation pose.
Start to wiggle the fingers and the toes. Walk the feet in, bringing the soles of the feet to the mat. Move the blocks out of the way. You can just scoot them off to the side. Roll over to your right side. Keep the eyes closed. Just stay inside your body for one more moment. Use the left hand. Bring yourself up to a comfortable seat. Sitting up tall, hands together in front of you. Slight bow of the head. Take a moment, honor and acknowledge your heart and your spirit, as well as everyone around you. Bring the head back up, blink open the eyes. Namaste. Thanks for joining in today. If you're congested, I hope it gets better. If you're not, bookmark this one. Maybe it's a good one to do another time. All right, see you later.